Okay. What's going on, y'all? Jay Wood is down. What's the man live radio? You. you know what I do? I'll be bringing in five, five, five for your ear artists. You know, right here with you. Today, I got PB Pluto. What's up, bro? Big Fats. What's good? What's good? Tell them where you from, what you all about first. All right, I'm PBE Pluto. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. I'm an artist, also a clothing designer. I have my own brand, Cross Culture. You know what I'm saying? Cross Culture, the, co the clothing brand. You know, we're pushing for business, man. You know, we're just tapping into a lot of different angles when it comes to the music industry and also the design industry. Also, I do acting. I'm in eight movies. Yeah, also working on a new movie. Uh, soon I can't mention the name yet, but just know your boy tapping into a lot of different industries and we're making a lot of noise right now. Hey, you all over the place. Did you start doing music or designing yeah. your clothes first? I honestly started with music first. Um, I started out in a live band at the age of 10. You know what I'm saying? Oh, really? The main drummer spot at the age of 10, yep. And then it branched out from there to basically actually you know, writing music or coming up with lyrics to the beats, you know what I'm saying? First of all, just me making the beats and sounds and stuff, but I wasn't really like a producer. I just was doing it live with the band. And then I just took that little element and just started tapping into freestyle and then trying to write records and stuff like that. And branch from there, you know, tapped into a different little, uh, couple different little groups and, you know, we were just tagging along, trying to make things happen. It ain't work out up until maybe the end of 2020 for real. No, the, the end of 2019, going into 2020. That's when I just went completely solo. And it seemed like everything I had been working on all over the years just kind of just superseded off that, you know, me just focusing on me instead of trying to focus on everybody else. You can lead a heart to the water, but you can't make them drink. So, it, no matter how much I wanted it for other people, they just ain't wanted enough for themselves. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, sometimes just, you gotta. Man, I, I, I sometimes you gotta flick them off like ashes, you know, and let them go. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah thanks, that's right. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, so, so since you went solo, your career just like skyrocketed. Man, it went crazy. It went crazy way more than I ever had going, you know what I'm saying, when I went solo. Because all the energy I was pouring into everybody else, I could just pour it out into me. And now, you know, the fruits of my labor is starting to, you know, it's showing. Cause yeah, I it's starting to show good. Artist. It's showing good. But yeah. I mean, yeah, we talking about where you record, you record your, uh, this one single by yourself. That you just did the first one that came out your studio that you did yourself. Yeah, that will add it up. Add it up is uh the one that I one of the uh, singles that I recorded in uh at my own studio, but the rest of it was recorded by Trevor, uh Link with Trail, producer out of Mobile, Alabama. Okay. Hot okay, producer okay. engineer. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I always try to get people to shout out they studio, you know, where they record at. You know, I feel like some right. of the producers, you know, they don't get the credit they deserve. You know what I mean? That that's definitely true. That's true. Yeah. So, what single are you pushing right now? Right now, I'm still currently pushing "Soak Up the Drip," but the single that's coming behind that is uh, "Stepping," which "Stepping" uh, this is the second week it has been playing on uh, Shade Four Five. Yeah. You know, uh, X Satellite XM Radio, and you know, the first week it gained some traction. Uh. People start calling into the stations up in New York. Um, they also was sending them messages on Twitter and stuff like that to the DJs asking who sang that record. You know what I'm saying? So, so the, the drip, you know, it, it's a good party record and it lines up with, you know, a lot of the stuff that's going on, like as far as the records that's hot and already out. Yeah. But stepping is like a different different beats, you know what I'm saying? It, it come from a whole nother angle. Also, you know, a lot of people gravitate to that record like as soon as they hear it. What's like, stepping about? It. What's it about? Well, honestly, it just depicts 
my my attitude, like how I am, like I'm real laid back. So people can kind of misconstrue that for like, oh, he ain't pulling out a lot of money and holding it to, yeah, he ain't walking around turning up and acting crazy. So that means, you know, I can try him. But in the stepping record, I'm letting you know, like, I'm laid back and my demeanor is cool, but I ain't finna play the radio with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. if I got to take it out with you, it's going there, like, all the way because I feel like this, I'm in my own lane, I'm in my own zone, I ain't going out my way to bother nobody. I'm just, I don't care who you is, I don't care what you believe, what you got going on. You could be racist, you could be gay, you could be whatever. I don't got nothing to do with that. You feel me? I'm still gonna say, what's up and keep going about my business. But if right. you step in my lane, you feel me? I'm gonna step on you, you know what I'm saying? And it's not gonna be no backing up, it ain't gonna be no plan going on, period. So that's basically what stepping is, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about in the record. I'm talking about that, but the type of beat and the way it come on and the way that I'm saying what I'm saying, it give you a party by it make you want to dance. But I'm, if you really listen to the lyrics, you'll be like, man, this dude really talking about he would slide, you know what I'm saying, if you get in the way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. But the way the beat going, it it make people want to dance and, you know what I'm saying, step, you know, so you can, you can portray it however you want to portray it. I try to make it, I try to keep my records open where it don't matter if you on some step team type setup, you can be in a, you know, fraternity or sorority, you on some stepping type setup and you can take that same record and display it as you stepping, you know what I'm saying, with that. Right. Or you can be a street person that's on some Hey, I'm shooting anything moving if it comes in my way. You know what I'm saying? And you can take that same record and display it in that way. So man, I gotta get a copy of that. Take it. You made me want to uh, have a copy. I said you made me want to have a copy of that. I oh, gotta yeah, get a copy of that. So I can spin it in the oh, club yeah. and I can spin it on the radio. Okay, I thought I had something to you. I'm I, I I I'm not sure which one I'm spinning right now. You know, we on live wanna go check and everything, but you sent me two tracks right. to check. Yeah, I sent you so good to drip and step. Okay. The drip is the one I'm playing right now. Right. That's the one I'm currently pushing, but stepping, that's the next single. Okay. But it's already starting to gain traction, you know. Had some mainstream people hit me trying to do remixes and stuff like that. And it was the record been out on my EP, but I'm just releasing it as a single. So it's yeah. about to be the record. That I'm re actually, you know, jumping behind it and, and putting my campaign behind. Was it hard coming out of Mobile to try to get noticed and seen and get your career going? I ain't gonna say it was hard coming out of Mobile. Cause the reason I ain't gonna say that because everywhere else I went, like they just gravitated to my image. You know what I'm saying? When I come in, it's just like I'm gonna be different. I'm gonna have a different hairstyle than everybody else got. I'm gonna have a, a, a different look. Like I'm I'm dressing how I dress, I'm doing how I do. Like I'm that odd boss. So I'm people gonna gravitate to it. And then when they try to see like, well, what you got going on, you know what I'm saying? It was easy for me to open the door up and let them know. And they really, you know, I really gained a lot of fans like that because people like, dang, your music hot. Like you gotta be already mainstream. And I'm like, well, I'm working on it. And they like, I don't understand why you're not already there. The hardest part of being from Mobile was really just getting Mobile on board. It was okay. easy networking with other people because they was just gravitating to the image. They was gravitating to the music like, bro, you there, you know. But in my own city, they like, oh, that's Pluto from around the corner. Oh, that's, we used to stay next door to him. There ain't nobody. You know what I'm saying? Man. I used to do this and that. I ain't, I used to go with his cousin. You know, like yeah. anything to not to discredit what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? And for the longest, a lot of the DJs were just on board with up and coming artists. You know, and it's still yeah. to an extent like that. You know, but what's kind of, I feel like it's kind of opening up the door a little bit is the fact that they actually seeing artists actually getting in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Right now we popping. Mobile is popping. Like we got yeah, eight, nine artists that's that's on right now. I mean, 
to name a few, you got Honeycomb Brazy. Yeah. No Cap, Rollo Rodriguez, Flo Millie, the famous twins. Um, yeah. Pasta the Don, JD the Gotti. Like, these people already got record deals, you know what I'm saying? They working. It's a lot of other artists, way, man, so many other artists that I can't even name, like, that's already at that point and past that level, for real. Uh, even my boy Trench Renna Pooty, you know what I'm saying? He got him a situation. Um, man, it's, it's a lot of other artists that's independent, that's working either for the deal or just working independently. Like, I'm the type of artist that could have been had a situation, but I just wanted to, to show my independence and grind and do it step by step so that I can create a platform to put a lot of these other independent artists on that I know been grinding and working and actually got the talent. They just don't have the connections or the money or the team or none or all and just don't know how to maneuver it. You know, so some of them got the connections, some got the money, some got the team. They just don't know how to execute. Some of them ain't got no money, no team, no connection, but they got great music and definitely don't know what they're doing, you know? Yeah. So somebody like me that could take a plat my platform and put those people on my platform and be able to put them where they need to be at, where they don't have to worry about all the extra, and we're going to create a situation where they can actually eat and feed their family without feeling like they signed to something that, that they got played on. You know? Hey, that's good. That's good that you want to help other people out. And you ain't want to take advantage of, right. you know what I mean? And a lot of these people want to take advantage right. of these young artists and shit, you know. Right. You know, being, I mean, you know, I, being, I don't even look at it. I mean, not to cut you off my bad, but I don't really look at it like it's taking advantage. I, it's just business, you know what I'm saying? And that's the part people miss from Scrooge when it comes to this industry. Like, you got to accept the business for what it is. It's just like, let me give you an example. If somebody was selling drugs and they didn't know what this drug really costs. They don't know what they really got. You think the person that's buying it gonna tell them hey, if they selling them this drug and it's, and, and it's worth 27,000, but they don't know that because they don't, they just trying to jump in this game. They don't, they just know I got yeah. all this drug and I want to sell it. Give me five grand. That person might, you know what I'm saying? Look at them crazy like, man, you, you sure? You know what I'm saying? But right. they know what it really costs. Why would I tell you what it costs if you don't know? If I'm finna capitalize, well, I'm gonna turn around and tell you, no. Bro, you know you can get 27000 for this, so you, you could turn around and charge me twenty seven for it. Right, no. right, right. I'm gonna give you what you asking for. Five grand, here you go. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna go and make $22,000 off of it. And you happy with what you got because you think you won. And then you come back with some more. And I buy it again, boom. But then you turn around and go to somebody who know what's going on after you'd have been in the game for a minute. And you say, well, I sold this for five grand. Whatever, whoop, you know, man, I won. And then they turn around and be like, you stupid. Bro, that by itself is worth 27000 That's without breaking it down and hustling with it. That's just hand to hand. You know, this person probably taking five grand, getting it to you, and then taking it and selling it right to the next person for 27. Then they yeah. come to you and say, oh, you played me. <laughs> no, you played yourself because you, you played yourself to educate yourself on what, you know what I'm saying? So that's the problem when it comes to music. Like people fail to educate themselves on the business. This is a business. Nobody going to tell you how to win when they trying to win. Is it to feed my family or feed yours? And, and I want to feed mine better than I want you to. I ain't going to say I don't want you to feed your family, but I want everything I want for my family. You know what I'm saying? First. first. So if you feel like you winning or whatever I'm getting you, if you came at me and said, hey, give me 27 for this, and then I negotiated you down to five because you just flat broke and ain't got nothing. And I'm like, shit. Man, you ain't got That's nothing. Man. Is, yeah. You know, it's a different ball game. But if you don't know, I, I'm not obligated to tell you. 
Because you felt like you won when you got fired. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Only reason you felt like you got played is when somebody else told you what this would work. But as long as you knew that you got them five, you were satisfied with that. And that's what any guy, any type of business. You know what I'm saying? Y'all hear that? He's speaking game to y'all now. Pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> somebody could be selling uh clothing. You know what I'm saying? It don't got to be drugs. I only reason I resonated to drugs because that's what a lot of people in the hip hop industry kind of gravitate to. to yeah. You know what I'm saying? They can relate to that. But you can relate it to clothes. You can relate it to food. You know what I'm saying? If this person find a plug where they buying chicken at this price and then they going to sell it to the restaurant at this price, they thinking they winning, but the restaurant not knowing, they can just go right over here to the same place and get it for the same price way cheaper. Yeah. Then they turn around and say, oh, you played me. No, you just didn't educate yourself on what to get the better prices at. Yeah. That's you know what I'm saying? saying? You ain't educate. Oh, you ain't go get the proper documentation that you need to go and get an account with this company so that you can get it. I already have that. So, hey, you're going to buy it at the price that I'm selling it to you for. Or are you going to figure out how to get over here? If you know that's where I'm getting it from. But I'd be a fool to tell you Hey, you know I'm paying uh fifty cent a wing, uh, a dime a wing over here, but I'm charging you a dollar wing. I'd be stupid. Why would I tell you? I that? know, right? Why would you even Come say on, that? Man. You so right. So you got to put that in in real terms. That's why I try to tell. I stop people when they say, "Oh yeah, you know it's bad deal." No, you signed the deal. What? How was a bad? It was good when you signed it. It sounded great to you at that time. Only reason it became bad because you educated yourself after you already obligated yourself. Yeah. So educate yourself before you obligate yourself. That's our new term for, for 2021. Yeah, for, that's for, a new phrase for, for me, 2021. You, educate yeah, yourself. Before you obligate yourself. Yeah, I hear so that. Educate what, yourself before you obligate yourself. Facts. Don't get obligated to something you ain't got no education on. And then mm-hmm. when you figure out how much you really got this and that, you know, this is like going to get a job. You know, you go and do something that you could have been doing on your own, but at the same time, you work to somebody else making pennies while they got their feet kicked up. Yeah. Because you ain't <laughs> want to do the education. You feel me? What you going to say? They played me? No, they nah. paid me. They paid you. And you agree with the pay until you figured out. You educated yourself and said, I can do this on my own. Why would I be cleaning up banks and buildings for this person making 10 an hour when they're making $100 an hour and I'm doing all the work? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I could be going and get my documentation and bid on these same buildings and make the $100 instead of making the 10. Yep, that's right. But to take education. That person didn't play you. Everybody ain't meant to be a boss. Just because you didn't know, you can't say it's the next man's fault. Facts. And at the same time, sometimes you can know, but it ain't meant for you to, you don't got the work in to, to be yeah, no that's boss. that's true too. That's true too. You don't got yeah. the, enough knowledge to even, you can know what, what, what to do, but then, the next step is knowing how to actually do it. You know what I'm saying? I can know it take, hey, a thousand bricks to brick this house in. I can go buy a thousand bricks. I can go buy a truck full of cement, but I can't tell you the first step on how to, where I start. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what, I, I don't know how to, lay, I seen people later, I guess you just lay the cement and just, that ain't, it looked like that's what they doing. I ain't measured out nothing. I ain't leveled out nothing. I, now my, I'm wondering why one side of the wall backwards, the next side taller than this. Damn, why mine ain't lining up like theirs? Because right. I don't have the education they got. They know what they're doing. I can't go off what I see. Yeah, I see that they use a thousand bricks. I see that they use cement. They use a, a tape measure that I don't know why they're using certain things or why I need to, you need to brick this side before you brick that side. 
you know what I'm saying, so that this will hold better. If you try this side first, everything gonna fall. Yeah. But I don't know that because I don't have enough education. So educate yourself before you obligate yourself. I like that. I like that, bro. What made you uh, start the clothing? How'd that come about? Well, I always just kind of like to be in my own little lane with my fashion and my drips. So 2019, I was going through basically some devastating situations where I was feeling like all the people around me that was close to me that were crossing me in some type of sense or form. I just was depressed going through so many different emotions. So I started just, I was listening to that NBA young boy blind when they crossed me. I yeah. used to have it on, on repeat all the time. So I started putting an X on my clothes, but I always knew how to kind of design my own stuff. So I would have the machines and equipment. It wasn't just like me drawing an X with a marker. Like it'll be like some type of designer setup. It might be like some little shiny little material, or some type of diamond type material or whatever yeah. type of setup I had going. And I would just put an X on my shirt, an X on my pants. And, you know, I was have other stuff where I might put some cuts in it and some rips and, you know, design them out. But the main thing I made sure I put the X on there because I just felt like that was, that was me just crossing out the people that was crossing me. Okay. That was oh, my symbol. You know, that was symbolized at the moment. So I flew to New York like four times within like a month and a half span. And uh, me and my partner, uh, he an artist too, named Rod, man. So we were networking with some people, you know, record label situations and major DJs and stuff. We would, we are, uh, every time we'll fly out there, we'll link up with this DJ named DJ Mr. Famous. It's part of the Union DJs. Uh, he also DJ on satellite radio, Shade Profile too. So um, we'll link up with him and kind of move around with him in the city when we get there on the nights here. DJ, this guy, man, is amazing. He would DJ at like three to six different spots in one night. I was like, I was just impressed. Like he'll come in for like a 30 minutes to an hour, DJ, and then go to the next spot. So we always on Saturdays, we'll go on this yacht here, DJ on this big yacht. It'd be like three to five hundred people on the yacht, you know, go out in the water for like four hours or whatever, two hours out and two hours back, I guess. Yeah. And um the fourth, every time I would go there. Um, just like in the daytime, we'll just be moving around and, you know, probably go to meetings and stuff and go out to eat and stuff. We, we was like staying in the Times Square all the time. So we, you know, it's just everything we're walking this and uh, kiss the train. And um, every time I would go outside the hotel, somebody would just stop me and be like, oh, my God, love what you have on. Can I take a picture of you? And I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> you know, they'll take a picture of me. Then I, I might go to the food truck. Somebody walk in, oh man, I love what you got on. Man, you might have to take a picture. Yeah. Yeah, take a picture. So I was just nonchalant with it. I never really thought nothing of it. But this happened like every single time. And it was just different races of people, different people. And I was like, I never thought of nothing until that, that fourth time I went to New York and we was on the yacht and we got to the end of the party. And DJ Mr. Famous was like, now, I've been wanting to ask you this every time you come up here. Because I, you know, no offense, but I'm in the capital of fashion, New York. But I've been trying to figure out where do you get these clothing you be wearing, bro? So I'm like, what? He's like, man, where you be getting this stuff you wear? So I was like, oh, I make it. He was like, man, you got to be kidding. So I was like, no, <laughs> I make it. He was like, man, I thought this was like a real like designer. I could not find this brand for nothing. And I didn't even have a name or nothing on it or none of that. So he was like, man, I need you to make me some stuff, man. I was like, cool. He was like, yeah, you know, you can put, you know, our uh, DJ coalition on that union DJs. I was like, cool, you know, we can make something happen. So we get me and my partner, after we get through party. We go back to the hotel, you feel me? He go to his room, I go to my room. Two minutes later, I get a phone call to my phone. Answer the phone, what's up? 
He like, bro, you stupid. <laughs> so I'm like, what? He like, man, you tripping. Like, what I did? I thought I, had, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I was dancing on somebody old lady or something. You know, I right. get out of town and I get a little turn because, you know, in town, a lot of people know me and, you know, just I have to be watchful and stuff. Out of town, you know, a lot of people don't really know who you is and what you really got going on. So a lot of times you ain't got to be more watchful of them because they ain't really, and a lot of people in other cities got, they got their own, so they ain't really worried about what you got. Right, like right, right. They, you know, people from where you from, they worry about what you got. They trying to figure it out. They either want to get it from you or get it with you. And sometimes you don't want to be the one that are uh, trying to sit around and figure out which one they're trying to do. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, that's right. Without just saying. So, you know, sometimes I get out of town, I just kind of let loose. Let my head on turn up. In town, you probably rarely see me dancing with a female. I be more just kind of bobbing my head and just paying attention all the time. Yeah. Out of town, I'm probably on every female movement. So, you know, I'm thinking, well, maybe I was dancing on somebody old lady and and I was intoxicated, probably just didn't give a fuck or whatever. So I thought, you know, so he was like, no, nah, man, you need to do this clothing brand, bro. So I'm like, what? I ain't finna do no clothes. He was like, bro, I'd have been in New York every time with you. We was like, it may not say nothing in Mobile, bro. We'd have been to LA, all this type of stuff. And everywhere you go, people actually stopping you, bro. But it just was crazy. New York, they actually take pictures of you. I'm like, yeah. He like, I'm right on side of you, dripping just as hard. But I don't got no custom made stuff on. They ain't said nothing to me. I ain't. He like, not one person <laughs> stopped me and said, take a picture. Uh, none of this. Like, bro, every single time we walked out, he for coming to you. So now, you know what I'm saying? I'm, because every time what happened, I just never paid no attention. I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, take a picture. All right. And then I just not think about it no more. So he just breaking it down. It was like, bro, then Mr. Famous, you know what I'm saying? How he was saying, he seen you rocking this and was trying to see you and all this. Like, bro, I'm telling you, you need to start the clothing. So I was like, well, you know why I wear the X on my clothes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, he was like, yeah. I like, so whatever it is, it got to be incorporated with the X. So he was like, well, shit, name it Cross. I was like, dude, how the hell name it Cross? That's with a C. He like, well, take the C out and put an X. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. So I was like, man, let me Google that. So I Googled it. And it, no, he said Cross, like C R O S S. So I Googled Cross with an X. It was some other stuff. I said, well, maybe Cross, like I already been crossed with an ED, past tense. I Googled it with the ED. It was something that I said, well, I like the name, but it got to be something else added to it. You know what I'm saying? So because I wanted something that you can just, you, you can Google it and it's going to come directly to me, like, when I looked it up, I ain't want nothing to pop up. Right. So I can start something under that name. That's right. That's so right. So I was like, well, it was different cultures of people that were stopping me. What about cross culture? Cross culture. And I said, well, what if I take the C out and put a K instead of the C? And I put cross culture. Like, basically, I'd have been cross and it's different cultures of people, you know what I'm saying, to stop me. And cross culture is just like a better name, like with the ED, like past tense, like I'm I'm for everybody, you know what I'm saying, whatever, whatever. So it like represents different I cultures that have been crossed over. You know? Right. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has been crossed at some point in their life. Exactly. No matter what but, culture you from, you've been crossed over. Right. You've been crossed. And at the same time, I can also make it mean it's for everybody, like every culture. Like, so I, I pretty much, when I tell people, when they ask somebody, like, what cross culture mean? I'd be like, it's for everybody. But the behind the scene meaning, the real meaning is everybody been crossed. But I don't want to promote the negative. So I'd rather 
promote the positive side of what cross culture means. Smart. Does That's it mean smart. that for everybody? And it also means everybody has been crossed. So yeah. I'd rather just promote the positive side of it and know because I feel like anything positive got to have enough positive and enough negative in order to be positive. Yeah, you're right. You don't have a battery. A car battery don't just have two positive posts on it. No battery has two positive. It got enough negative and enough positive in order to give a positive charge. So, and it don't have two negative posts on it. So, I feel like that combination of a positive meaning and a negative meaning will give it a positive outlook. So, you know, and it's been up since then. But when I sent the name to my partner, he said, hell no. He said no? <laughs> like, no. Bro, you tripping. Name it Cross. I was like, listen, I appreciate you for your motivation, but Cross is something you would do. Cross coaching is what I'm going to do. So I always tell this story, and I tell it like that because the problem with a lot of people, they do what everybody else wants them to do. Like, if it's not in your heart, like, whatever your heart is telling you, do that. Just because this your friend, that's your mama, that's your cousin, like, bro, do whatever you feel. They may, they can give you the motivation to do, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. But you don't have to do it the way that they, are, they would do it or they are talking about doing it. Do it the way you want to do it. That's so, right. you know, I knew Cross had other stuff going on. I didn't want to tie my brain up in that. Now, if it didn't have nothing going on with it, yes, I would have named it Cross. But it had other stuff going on, so that didn't, it, it wasn't meant for me to do it that way. No matter how much my home my homeboy would not wear my brand for a whole year, up until he started seeing it pop and flourish and just like, you know what? Because he didn't even want me to do the logo as what it did. He was like, just keep it as the X. That's where it started from. I said, no. I'm gonna do the the logo. How I'm gonna do it? Like, yeah, let's see that logo again. Like, uh, yeah, I like that. Right, that's tight. That's see, tight. That's it's tight. It's a conversation piece. A lot of people think it's a bunch of K's. Some people think it's two backwards K's, but it's not. It's simple. It's just an X right there and a K. That's all Cross it coach, is. But it, yeah, but it's blended all together to make it look like a symbol. But it's that actually just tight a symbol to me. X and a K. Yes, sir. You know, so he didn't like the logo when I drew it out and sent. I was like, well, you know, I'm going to do it the way I'm going to do it. And that that needs to motivate some people to understand, like, it don't matter who the person is. Do whatever you're going to do for you not, what you, not what somebody else wants you to do. Yeah, they might motivate you to get into it. Yeah, they might give you the the thrive and the drill and the whatever it took to get you to do it. But if you're going to do it, do it how you do it, not how they do it. That's right. That's right. Y'all yeah. heard that. Just, you sitting here, you sitting here teaching like, lessons right. tonight. <laughs> you sitting there teaching oh, yeah. real lessons tonight. Man, so then too. you said you do movies too now, right? Yes, sir. Like, what kind of movies you been doing? And stuff? How'd you get into that? Well, my first movie I did was The Prince, uh, which was starring 50 Cent and Bruce Willis. Um, and I really got into that by uh, a friend of mine that, that cut hair. A guy named T, he was, he cut somebody hair that was like in the movie or part of it. I don't know what their role was, but they were saying we're shooting the movie Whatever, whatever. It's a major movie. They didn't tell him too much detail. It said, you know, if you want to be a part of it, you know, email your name, your picture, and a little bit about you to this email, you know what I'm saying? And, and they looking for more people. So T hit me up. He said, man, you know, I ain't really into that type of stuff. And, you know, I know you went to move music, but this may be something that may work better for you too. He said, you know, I don't know if the dude legit or not, but he gave me this email. You know what I'm saying? Just told me the whole setup. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, I'll give it a try. You know, it, they can't, you know, it, it's worth a try. Right. If it's a fake email, if it's whatever, you know what I'm saying? At least I tried. So I emailed him. I told him who I was. You know what I'm saying? I said, just got out of, well, 
at that point, I hadn't just got out, but I had been in the military. You know what I'm saying? Also, I think I was still in college at the time, too. Yeah. So I was, and I, I did my four years in the military, got out and actually went to college also and got a college okay. degree, too. So you ain't just talking to a hip hop artist, you ain't just talking to a rapper or clothing designer. What you, what's like, your degree in? Uh, network administration. Okay, yeah, networking. Yeah, That's one of the IT. most important things in the industry. Okay, networking. Thanks. Yeah, so the IT yeah. in the military. You know, worked on computers and devil communication. Had a top secret SCI clearance, the highest clearance. You Me could get, too. You know, what I'm saying? So, Me yeah, too. Facts. I used to work so. at the Cryptologic Support Center in San Antonio, Texas. For real? Yeah, yes, sir. So I, was, I was stationed down. Uh, I was in the Navy. Okay, Thank I was in the Air Force, yeah. Right. 12 years, 12 years. Yeah. yeah, I did four. I made E5 in two years. Hey, that's good, bro. Yeah. So, you know, and I went to uh, college and all that type of stuff. So I just kind of get them a brief background. They they hit me back like a couple of days later, said, you know, can you uh, be available on maybe Wednesday or whatever? From six o'clock in the mo- at night to six in the morning, hit them back like yes. I said, "Well, wear this type of attire. Wear something that don't have like a brand showing and all this and that." So I was like, "Cool." They hit me up the next day. I said, "Well, can you come from seven p.m. to six in the morning?" And I'm thinking like, "What? That's crazy. Why would you ask that if I could come at six? Yeah, I definitely could come at seven. Like that was stupid." I was like, yes. You know what I'm saying? So they were like, well, show up at 7. When's to come around? I put, and they was, they, they were sending little emails out in between. Was like, it's going to be like 40 people on this scene. Whatever, well, you know, kind of a little brief overview. So they, um, I pull up at 7. When I get there, only, I see maybe 38 cars, but I don't see nobody. I see two other cars pull in, but they just sitting in the car too. So I sit out there, it's maybe 7.15. I still don't see nobody pulling up or nobody moving around. I was like, well, maybe we're supposed to go in the building. So I get out the car. And one of the other guys get out. I walk up to the little door, I knock on the doors and stuff. Nobody came to the door. I was like, damn, maybe I missed, you know what I'm saying, my mark. So I'm about to get to go back to the car and leave. One of the guys, uh, he got out of his car too. So I asked him, I was like, you here for the movie? Like, yeah, you here for the movie? Yeah. I'm like, you know, where we go? And it was like, well, I was just told to come at six. And then I was told to come at seven. I was like, me too. They said it's supposed to be 40 cars. Like, it's about 40 cars. They would say we're supposed to get, you know, um, somebody who was coming to get us or something or whatever. Maybe we we supposed to actually came at six. And we got the wrong email. So we was like, so it was a third person jump out the car. And he he was like, Y'all here for the movie, whatever, whatever, same setup. We were like, Yeah, so we all agreed, like, we didn't miss our time. We supposed to came here at six. How do we, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. So we about to get in the car and leave. As soon as we get in the car, it's a van pull up, pulling, driving fast, like reckless. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? We're like, y'all here for the movie? We're like, yeah. They're like, get in. So we just jump in. So when we get in, they driving so fast. Like, bro, we sliding on the back seat. Man, I'm like, <laughs> all of us kind of like looking at each other like, what the fuck? We didn't got into like, right? thinking like, man, we finna get kidnapped. We the trip. Somebody move with these folks for the killers. So I'm real there about to choke the dude in the front seat because they, they ain't. You know what I'm saying? Did nothing that I would expect them to do. Like, let me check your name on the list. Let me, none of that. Like, these dudes just flying, whipping around corners. Like, they don't want us to know where we're going. What the hell going on? So, we all just kind of like not saying nothing, but we looking at each other like, uh, you thinking what I'm thinking type time. Right. So I'm like, man, I'm going to jump up out this month. So, we pull up at a stop location, and then the guy was like, Okay, we're at this location. So we like, 
what happened to the other people? You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought I said, they're like, oh, my bad. We didn't even tell you guys. We chose you three out of all the other people to be with the main characters. Like, you guys are going to come in with uh, the main characters. It was like, oh, like, okay. So we're going to hold an area, get ready to uh, come out on the set. So they telling everybody, like, Certain people got to be over here shooting pool. Some of these people might be over here dancing together. A few people might be sitting at the, uh, at tables drinking and acting like they talking or something. So we just standing in line waiting to see what we're supposed to be doing. And they had this action scene with uh, Jason Patrick where he was trying to figure out where his daughter was. And uh, the guy, I mean, Jason grabbed this guy's girlfriend because that was his daughter friend. And she yanked away, and you know he kind of pulled her a little hard, and you know the boyfriend was supposed to jump up and you know kind of get aggressive with him, like or whatever. Well, the guy that they flew in, he wasn't getting aggressive enough, and it was up to me, like up next to like to just I probably was just supposed to be a person just standing at the bar or something. Yeah, I walk in with them and stand at the bar. So they was like can somebody else do this? Like somebody else could get aggressive. So I didn't <laughs> say nothing. And there was a white guy. I still remember. He was already in his position, but he like stood up and walked in front of me. and was like, I can do it. I'm looking like, motherfucker. You know what I said? So he walked up there and before they got ready to let him do it, it was like, nah, just go back to the position we put you in. They pointed at me like, hey, can you do this? I'm like, yeah. So they were like, look, get aggressive, do this, jack him up, whatever, whatever. So they say, action, I did it. So the uh, the director was like, hold on. Let me look at that in the camera. Do that again? I did it. He was like, you took acting classes or have you been in some other movies or something? I'm like, nah. He's <laughs> like, man, do it one more time. I did it again. He was like, this is crazy. So I'm saying, like, I don't know what, I'm thinking something wrong. He's like, one more time, one more time. I did it again. He was like, oh, my God. You are not, listen, hey, he's going to switch positions with you. You do this part, whatever, whatever. Yeah, then, that's how it goes. They didn't, put me, they didn't put me in the holding area with the extras like I was. They told me move and go to the area where the where the actors was. And you got food, drinks, everything laid. I'm like, damn. Like, so he came and talked to me. He was like, man, I really like this. I'm going to make sure you get in the movie, this and that. And we just talked. <laughs> and from that point forward, you know what I'm saying, I landed a part in the movie. And then I started getting more parts and more movies. And uh, then what happened, my my image started to change. I initially, I had got my face pierced. Yeah. So I had got, I got like, I had six piercings in my face. It was like a diamond cross under my eye. Now people have a little, little yeah. cross tattooed on their eye, but I had it in diamonds, real diamonds. So the next couple of movie sets I started showing up on, and this was before I grew the dreads and all that. So I was trying to transition my image for the music. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew I needed to bring something to the table. Like, I got to do something that nobody else is doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my first initial thing was the diamond cross under the eye. You know what I'm saying? But when I would go show up on the set for movies, they'd be like, because all my other pieces were clean cut. You know I'm. Yeah, they want you to take that shit out. Yeah, but I, they couldn't. They couldn't come out. You know what I'm saying? So they start putting like makeup over it, and you know the directors were kind of irritated. Like we didn't have this image in mind. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta now we gotta try to do stuff to try to, you know, deflate that image because the pictures I was sent in was just clean cut, fresh out the military guy. But okay. I show up. You know what I'm saying? I got diamonds in my face and shit. Like, whoa, shit. So, with them putting the stuff over it, it started making them, like, reject 
and swell up and stuff like that. So I was like, dang, when they start rejecting and coming out, I knew I was gonna have to take them out. So I start take, getting them taken out or whatever. And I, I was like, well, I gotta come in the industry with something. So I was like, well, shit, maybe I'll just go to dreads at the fade. So I always yeah. had the fade. And I started growing dreads, getting it twisted. And when I started showing up on set like that, they definitely was getting more mad. You know what I'm saying? I started getting more <laughs> tattoos. <laughs> they was like, they didn't like that shit. Yeah, the roles start going down and down and down. Like, uh, we, you know, because they wanted to give me like the clean cut security guard type of roles and stuff. But, you know, I'm looking like this gangster showing up like, like, oh, shit. Still got dreads in the top of his head. I ain't have, I just had a little twist at the time. Yeah. Like, the image was tightening up. So, you know, that kind of start breathing out, you know, the, the movies that I was able to get and stuff like that. And um, I just started focusing more into the music anyway. And that's when I started growing the dreads out. I actually had, went back and got my face pierced again, maybe a few years ago. But by me piercing it in the same spot that was already pierced, it was scar tissue right there. Yeah. So it was like it was a 50-50 chance they will stay. I didn't want to pierce the other side because I already got Little dots right here, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to have right. it on both sides. So I was like, well, just do it on the same side. They reject, and I ain't, you know, I ain't worried about it. So I had them for a couple months. They start rejecting. I went on and got them taken out. I said, well, I ain't finna try. But that was dangerous anyway to have your face pierced. You get into a fight, somebody hit that, man, it will rip all the skin out. Of you. you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, that you could have beat them up, but they just got one quick. Or oh, they shirt got caught on and they ripped it off of anything, you know what I'm saying? It looked like you just got punched in your face and you got to go get stitches. So I said, you know what, I'm going to just, which I don't, I'm not a violent person, so I don't be having them type of issues, but you never know what can happen. Yeah, you can yeah, be yeah. breaking up a fight and somebody, you know what I'm saying, swing or elbow you in or something by mistake. Well, but so, there's somebody the wrong way. Hit a pole, anything. Thanks. Yeah. Fact. So, so now you just started that, focusing that's on the music and then your music mm -hmm. career has really started rising, rising, rising. You know, right. so what's so I know you pushed that uh single stepping, but what's your next move that you're gonna make? Well, honestly, um really just pushing that that record, the, the stepping record out. So I'm doing a mixtape with the Alabama uh Mobile Alabama Coalition DJs. Which where I'm gonna put I dropped a few singles uh within the last month, which was uh added up. Also act up with uh C Nile and a record called Back In with my partner uh Rockstar out of uh, Louisville, Kentucky, which he got killed two weeks after we did the song. So, mm -hmm. you know, that just gave me more motivation and, and more push and drive to just keep going and try to stay focused because, you know, he got killed in his own city. And that, that started becoming popular, like people killing artists, you know, in their own cities and stuff like that. So I just move a different way. Yeah. But, you know, I still put the record out there, you know, to represent his team. They still pushing. They still got that, you know, their other artists out working and, and grinding or whatever. So big shouts out to J-Rock Entertainment out of Louisville, Kentucky. Um, they actually got me booked back out there Father's Day weekend. Okay. So, I'm so just Louisville, putting that big Father's together. Day weekend. Also, uh, huh? You said Father's Day weekend in Louisville. Yeah, Louisville. Okay. Yeah. This weekend, Mother's Day weekend, I'll be performing at the uh, Mobile, Alabama, Greater Gulf State Fairground with uh, Young G's and Bon B, Papa Duck, and Juvenile. Um, yeah, Are so. you serious? For real? I didn't even know that show was coming. Oh, yeah. It's this Saturday. This Saturday. Yeah. Okay. So that's a it, big show. A that's a big show. Oh, you're right, you're right. So and also just got booked on uh for Jada Kid's birthday bash in, in, in Atlanta, uh May twenty eighth. Yeah. So we grinding, man. I'll, and I'm also booked May fifteenth, uh DJ Tech out of Mobile. He got a mansion pool party we doing. Um 
June 11th, DJ Stretcher got a matching pool party that I'm booked on. So, you know, we, we oh, rocking. Yeah. You, you busy. You staying real busy. Yeah. Yeah, we rocking like a cut-off stocking, man. Ain't no plan going on. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, uh, you know, you being the artist, you know, and the success that you've had and all this other kind of stuff, uh, you know, we talking to the artists that are trying to come up, you know, they're looking up to you and stuff like that. What's the best mm -hmm. advice you can give them? The best advice I can give them is don't give up, which everybody probably tell you that. But at the same time, this is not an overnight success type of business. This takes real hard work and grinding. Don't pay attention to what everybody else got going on because what may happen for you may come in a whole different angle. You can't, everything that works for me may not work for you. You got to find who want to hear what you got. It's an audience, it's a market for everything, everybody. That's why you see the most stupidest record blow up. A yeah. real hit is not made, it's marketed. It, any record could be a hit if it's marketed right. So sometimes you got to take your record. It's, it's not that certain DJs don't want to play it. It's just you're not branded yet. And you're trying to get with people that only rock brands. It's like trying to stand in the Jordan line with some with a Jordan man riding a, a pony. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody that you can have them the same exact color, the same style. You can even have better the, the shoes can massage your feet. They got heat and cold inside, all this <laughs> stuff going on. You not finna get one person out that joint line to buy. All right. And it could have been made from a better company, better leather, better everything. But, it's but a they're joint. not real joints. They look just like the joints. Nobody in that line is gonna buy them. It's Until they right. become their own brand, when they become a brand, then they'll stand in line to buy those too. But then you got to look at who support stuff before it become branded. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes your audience may be the mixed crowd. It might be people that listen to some different stuff other than just what's popular. Them the people you need to go and try to perform for. Them the DJs you need to go and try to get to play your records. Because word of mouth is the biggest form of promotion. So a lot of times... When you tell you can tell a person one thing and they'll look at you crazy because it's like, whatever, he just wants somebody to listen to his music. But when somebody else tell you, that gives you a whole different precedent. Just like you just said, hey man, other DJs was hitting me up and saying, Hey, you gotta holler at PBE, you gotta this and that. I didn't hit you up and say that. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying? There was a different approach, it's a different energy that, oh, I need to see what this guy got going on because yeah. Why would everybody else be talking about it? Why I don't know. I need to know. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But if I would have came to you and said, hey, man, you need to holler at me. I'm the hottest thing popping. You probably be like, oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Hot rapper. Somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody said that. But if somebody else is vouching for you, it's a different story. Yeah, that's so, right. Sometimes you got to focus on the people that want to hear what you got and let them spread it for you. Not you always trying to do all the work. You don't need a thousand people, you need 10 people. Them 10 gonna put 10 on and that'll make a hundred people. Them hundred put 10 on and that'll make a thousand people. But when you're trying to get a thousand people, you probably not finna touch none. I feel you. That's you the real saying? shit, and that's the real artists, shit, bro. Uh, that's uh, the uh, real uh, shit. Right. A lot of artists approach the industry the wrong way. You got to understand when you go into certain markets and certain facilities, certain people is a lot more important than other people. So say if you go in a nightclub, they got a thousand people in. You don't want to try to pass out a thousand CDs. Yeah. Because you're going to probably pick up 999 of them off the ground. Yeah. You want to go in a club with a thousand people and go to the main person that could touch all 1,000 of them. And that's the DJ. Yeah. Hey, man, I know you're doing your thing, bro. What you drinking? They're, they're going to open for dialogue. Hey, I'm I'm PBE Pluto. I do music, whatever, whatever, man. I know, you know, people probably come to you all the time, bro, but I ain't coming like that. I mean, get you a drink or whatever. 
and just ask you for a little bit of your time while you doing your thing. Look, I just want to get your email so I can email you some records and let you kind of get a feel for me at a later time. I know you're busy right now and you don't have time to be trying to figure out if my record's hot or not. Hey, I want you to check me out and see, you know what I'm saying, if my records actually work in the facility that you DJ in. They're going to respect that. Yeah, you're you know so what I'm saying? right. Then they're going to say, man, he got my email, bro. Or he got my card. You send it to him. Hey, man, you know, what's your social media? I want to hit you on social media, too. You get their social media. That way you got, you ain't asking somebody for their number, but you got a way for them to actually see what you got going on. Now you follow them on Instagram. They go through your page. And they're like, damn, this dude, actually. Damn, I need to really. Oh, he did email me the record. Let me go and check him out. I need nigga shit. How, what the? F Yo. Man, what you doing Saturday, bro? I'm gonna spin this mother, this shit going. But that don't happen all the time. Every DJ not gonna do that. Some of yeah. them will. Some of them won't. It's a process of elimination. But you know, hit them back up a couple of days later. Hey, did you get a chance to check out the email? Or you want me to resend it to you so it'll be fresh in your email? Yo, yeah, just send it, resend it, man. Cause I had a lot of emails after that. And man, I was drunk that night. You, you know, sure know, right. Resend it. You know what I'm saying? You sure right. You gotta right. be considerate. You can't be like, Hey, bro, you check me out, bro. Hey, bro, how my shit is, bro? I'm hot, bro. Nigga, look, nobody want to hear that. Nobody want to hear that, bro. Like, be considerate. Hey, man, if, if, if I need to resend it, man, because I just want you to check it out or whatever. Now, whenever you get time, go on, send it now, man. I'm, I'm in the car about to head to here, but, you know, I'll check it out a little bit before I pull up. Boom. Then they might hit you back. Like, boy, this is hot. Whatever, whatever, you know. Then you might go in there the next time. You already know what he drank it. Go ahead and send it to him. Hey, go take DJ Sutton says they Henderson and Coke, man, on me. Just tell him it came from PBE Pluto. You ain't even got to go up there and greet him. Hey, this came from PBE. Oh, my boy, PBE in the building somewhere, man. I appreciate the drink. You know what I'm saying? Go get with the MC. If the DJ don't want to play your record, buy him a drink. The dude is on the mic. I just want you to shout me out, man. Let him know I'm in the building. PBE Pluto in the building. You know what I'm saying? And every yeah. time you come in, PBE Pluto, the DJ eventually gonna be like, who the fuck is this? This motherfucker keeps shouting out all the time. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this the dude. Yeah, you feel me? So sometimes you gotta approach them different ways. So many DJs, how you know you got going on? They wanna play the little baby. They wanna play the people that ain't finna even shake their hand when yeah. they come to the city. Yeah, you DJing for them before they get there, but when they get on stage, you and everybody else got to get off the stage. These folks ain't finna shake your hand, they ain't finna do none of that. None but of some, that artists, shit. some DJs are scarred from artists that they didn't help and then they just ran off. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I encourage the DJs to get to a real business going, get to a system going. Okay, That's right. you want your record spent? I got five DJs up under me. Hey, you pay this much a week or this much a month, and we're going to send you 30 second videos, this and that. You know what I'm saying? Now you got a situation going, you do it with one artist for free and just be like, hey, tell everybody I told you. You know what I'm saying? Then when everybody else want to be pushing their record, because you don't have to play the whole record. Like, DJs got to get back into learning how to break records. Yeah. People are teaching span is short. Yeah. They don't want to hear the whole record all the time. Sometimes you got y'all got to tap back into mixing these records in with the mainstream record. Sometimes you got to take the hook from my song and put it on Lil Baby Hottest record, his beat. You yep. know what I'm saying? You sure so right. So they resonate with the beat, and you might have his Lil Baby song about to come up, but it's playing. Why did they eat up the trip? Why did they suck with the trip? But it's Lil Baby beat. You know what I'm saying? So now they they. Resonating in the head, then you zoop, go to little baby. You know what I'm saying? Whatever song he got, that's that right. You to beat for. So you might do that a couple of times just to get them like used to that hook, and then you might chop it and come in the next week and actually play just my hook, and then mixing it back and forth with something that they know, and then play the mainstream record. Then you know it's work when you break a record. It's not just put the record on everybody finna go crazy. I don't have the same avenues and the same promotion that a mainstream artist have. They got YouTube, TikTok, 
fucking you playlist, all this Spotify, these folks hearing them all the time, constantly. So of course, when you play it in the club, they're gonna go crazy because yeah. it's already been programmed in their head. My record only getting programmed when it get played. I got to do so much more work. But the DJs don't understand it. Like, damn, why when we played it, everybody didn't just go crazy? Because they don't know the record yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it takes programming. You got to constantly put it in their head. So sometimes you got to step. If you believe in the record, you, you're going to go out your way to make sure you break it. You know what I'm saying? And that ain't just playing it. Sometimes you got to, man, send me the vocals and send me the beat. Take that them vocals and put them on another record that's already hot that they know. You got to brand it. You know that's what I'm saying? The EPK, that's the DJ service pack that I'll be telling Come Mars on, about. DJ service packs, you know, I'm with the fleet DJs. And I'll be telling them I Facts. need that for the fleet DJs, you know? Facts. So, and yeah, that's the thing, you know, a lot of artists ain't, ain't, ain't getting the clean, the dirty, the vocals, and the instrumental no more. They just want to see send you the dirty version or just the this version. Like, you got to send these DJs every version, but at the same time, some DJ got to put in some work too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You got to yeah. go back because that's how people used to break records back in the day. You will hear somebody mainstream on a local up-and-coming record. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll hear the DJs mixing it back and forth. That's why you keeping the crowd in tune and they still kind of getting used to the words to this record. You might do that for a whole month before you actually play the real record. Now they actually know the words. They're like, man, why I know? Why, why did they eat up the drug? My president, why I know that? You know what I'm saying? Because he's yeah. been playing this hook. Because he's been playing it over and over and over again. On, on Money Band, your new record that you love. You know what I'm saying? He's been playing this hook over and over on Lil Baby, new record that you love. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's why how you know, know it now. Exactly. So when the actual record play, now people are like, oh, this, you know what I'm saying? We got to get back into that, man. Now you got the button pushing DJ to just push a button to play a record. And if the crowd don't gravitate to it, that first time is like, oh, they ain't feeling it. Bro, do you know how I many records I didn't feel? But I heard it so many times I started saying it. I, I feel like the DJs them. don't hype them up. Like when I go spin at a club, I would mm. say, you know, 75% of my music I spin is independent underground artists. But I hype right. them up. I hype them up when right. I'm playing their songs. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, I get the crowd involved. You know, I sing the hook with them the whole nine yeah. yards. And see, that, that's a whole nother ball game. Like, you making the crowd feel like they should, why don't I know this? You yes. making them feel like that. But a lot of DJ definitely ain't doing it. It's different tactics in how you break records. But that's definitely a, a good way, too. Like, actually hyping the crowd up and getting the people involved to make them feel like you missing out because you don't know this record. You know what I'm saying? So these days, a lot of them ain't doing it. They just playing it. And if it ain't catching in the first <laughs> minute, they zoom and go on to the next one. Go to the next song. They'll, they'll play the new uh, little Baby and nobody moving to that, but they're going to play it all the way through. You yeah, know what I'm see, saying? I don't like that and shit. they're going to play like it all shit. the way through the next week. And then when people start saying it, they like, yeah, I broke that. But you ain't this local artist that's in it or this another problem. When the artist is in the building, you don't have to tell everybody that that's his record. Because certain people that would have been bobbing and going to it, but the fact that they know it's his record, they're like, oh, that's a bunch of crap. So, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Sometimes you just got to play it. You just let it's it play. It's mainstream record like everything else. Just play yep. it or hype that's it up. That's right. Yeah, this hot. Whoop the whoop. Sign the lyrics, like you said. Sign some of the, the hook to it. Hype it up. Make it seem like this the hottest thing popping. That's right. That's right. That's right. They're going to make some people go off your energy. Like, oh. Hey, hey, even if they don't know the song, they're going to be going off your energy. That's right. There's so many different tactics into breaking records. It ain't just playing the song and people just gravitate to it. That It don't happen the same way because an independent artist and a mainstream artist got two different paths. You know what I'm saying? Mainstream, they don't got, they got departments for marketing, departments for this and that. We don't have all that. So you yeah. got to be a little bit more lenient with us than somebody <laughs> yeah. that's already mainstream. 
That's right. You That's know? right. And, and a lot of times when when independent artists record do get broken, it's because they got 50 different people already coming in with them that's jumping around and hyping it up. So other folks just, hey, they going off their energy. I see that too. You I see that too. Saying? So when that happens, that makes other people like, oh, shit, I want to hear that song again. But everybody don't have a team of people around them. And everybody- 50 people to ride with them. Yeah, you feel me? Some people just don't got, they got great music. They just ain't got folks that believe in them. You know what I'm saying? And that don't make, because that person that got the song with 50 people jumping around, they shit might be really garbage. But the fact that they got the energy going, they getting the, you know what I'm saying, getting more precedence past the next person who don't have that. Yep. I've you know seen it happen saying? plenty of times. I've seen it happen a million times with shows and stuff. Right. Yeah. Thanks. You so, right. you know, I just like to get on different platforms, bro, and just drop jewels from a different angle. Like I said, bro, I'm a businessman. I just do music also. Music is just one, one side of what I got going on. But there's so many different angles to me. And I feel like, you know, nowadays, if you're an artist, especially an up-and-coming artist, you need to have mm-hmm. your money coming from several different ways, not just one. Thanks. Thanks. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's another thing, because it takes so long to start getting money in this industry. You know what I'm saying? People think, I'm going to drop a record and I'm just going to blow up. No. It don't. Ha- it could happen like that, but it don't usually happen like that. Yeah. Even the people that got deals, sometimes it take them a minute before they actually start really seeing some money. You know what I'm saying? Some of the people don't see money for a minute, you know what I'm saying? But they got a team of people that's going to keep them up and keep them going until they start seeing the money. And they got departments. <laughs> yeah. And at the same time, like the labels be fronting them the money before it comes because they already see what's going to happen. But the label is basically JG Wentworth. You know what I'm saying? When you when you in a set, you got a settlement. And yeah. you don't want to wait five years to get get this million dollars. Hey, we'll give you seven hundred thousand right now. And be you know done with it. Or, or, or six fifty. We'll give you six fifty right now, or you can wait five years for that million. They gonna take they that six fifty. Yeah, they know them six fifty. Hey man, shit, I can go make me a million dollars off six fifty. Let me go on get that. I might yep. not even see five years. I'm telling you what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, now nah, I'm broke right now. I need that. <laughs> That's so hey, right. I already understand that. First of all, that million probably going to be about 1.2 by the time they get it. They done rolled it in some type of extra account that's going to be receiving so much uh, so much extra uh, money along with that, you know what I'm saying, our uh, investments or whatever. So by the time they get it, they, it done turned into 1.2. So they took six five and made another six hundred thousand off. Well wasn't nothing to them. Yeah. Just from waiting. But they got people money dropping every month. You know what I'm saying? This somebody money that just dropped from five years ago. We take their money and invest it and give it to some other people. Boom. Then this month somebody else money drop. We can put that in the bank. This month somebody money drop. We take that and invest it and give it to some other people and wait for their money to drop. Keep rolling you know, it over, rolling it over, yeah. rolling it over. But that's the same thing with the label. So they're going to give you this percentage of this amount right now because they know down the line all the money that's coming is theirs. So when you go broke off your little 650000 now you mad. Damn, five years later, you ain't got to die. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, they need to give me some, bro. She. That was a whole three hundred fifty thousand, bro. Nah, like you said, it was good when you signed it. Thanks. It was good when you Thanks. signed it. You know what I'm saying? You should have educated you yourself be before you obligated yourself. Thanks. Thanks. So you know that's basically what's going on. So a lot of these people getting advancements. What you think advance mean? I'm advancing you on the money that you're going to get. Yeah, but if I gotta give you something in advance, trust and believe it's not gonna be in your favor. It's not. That's right. That's if right. I give you two million, I need to begin four million. Nah. 
and you can wait your ass and get the two million. Right. But a lot of people they take that up front money. That's why artists able to make it look like this and that. And then a lot of artists don't know this too. Like these folks have teams of people. A lot of this stuff is face card value. A lot of this stuff is relationship. Why you think certain artists get certain managers or certain people on their team that's already got connections? They can make a call. I remember when I first met Future, like before he ever blew up. Like Rocco and DJ Esco came to my club. I used to own nightclub. Like, hey, bro, could book Future at fifteen hundred dollars? I'm looking like hell. No, nah, I don't even know who this is. Like, I didn't do it, but one of my partners booked him at his spot. Nobody yeah. knew who he was, but they at that time, that's when CDs were still popular. So they sent like a thousand CDs along with the flyers. Or like pass these out with the flyers. Well, it was his grand opening. So people was going to come anyway, but the fact that they had an artist there and then they passed out the CDs, people would listen to it and liked it. When they came, they sang his songs. It was on. Yeah, you feel me? So Rocco and DJ Esco were going city to city, state to state to promoters and club owners getting them to book future. And then when that Rex and Rex record blew up, like they circled back and went back and got more money. Now he was 15, now he's 7,500 because he really got some traction going. Yeah. Then 7,500 turned to 10. 10 turned to 15, 15 turned to 20. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Now he ain't no telling what he calls it. Ain't no telling, like a hundred thousand. <laughs> right. But from the average artist standpoint and from somebody on the outside looking in, that just happened. He just started getting booked everywhere. No, somebody really was moving his project. Somebody was going to these DJs, coming to these club owners, these promoters that already had clout. You know what I'm saying? And getting him booked. I know this personally. Yeah, I that was a team club behind owner me. at the time. They came to me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't have a clue. This was when DJ Esco was nobody. Way now back you then. got Eskimo City. Yeah. Now you're all over the place. Come on, man. I just do this a millionaire as a DJ. But he took sacrifices. He got on the road and started going and trying to get future book. He lost his job three times at Magic City for playing future records because they didn't want no independent artists or local rappers' music played. But he believed in it so much. Even when the owner of the club did, he risked his job to play this man records. He risked money out of his pocket to go state to state, city to city. If he had a cousin in the state, a friend, he going there. Let me, hey, plug me with y'all DJ, y'all promote. Hey, look. And if he had to bring Rocco in to devout to somebody made Rocco, you know what I'm saying, well, how did at the time? So a lot of people wanted to mess with Rocco. So it's like, yeah, you feel me? So sometimes you can't look at from the outside what's going on with somebody. You got to understand, like, it take a team for stuff to happen. Some people, you got to go get with somebody who knows something. Just like you, I, I can guarantee you, you know, Maybe two, three DJs, you know a lot more, but you may know two or three that got a popping thing going on at some spot. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. If you really got heavy behind the artist, you can be like, hey, man, you know, bring my artist in or whatever, whatever. Some places may pay. Some places might say, y'all got to pay us for our platform. You know what I'm saying? But however it got to happen, it got to happen. You want the promotion. So... A lot of DJs need to understand this part too, from a DJ standpoint. Sometimes these artists don't got no money to pay you. So create a situation where you can get paid. Go get them booked in other places. That's right. Put on That's right. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. You telling this person you believe in them, you know they ain't got to do that. Or if this person already got something going on, hey, man, look, I want to be your role DJ. But let me show you what I can do for you before I just try to embark on what you already built. Listen, my people in, in Dalton, you ever been there? Nope. Well, shit, 
I'm gonna call them, man, to see what we can do, man. What what type of price you want to talk? But see, I want 15. But see, can you do 12, five? You know what I'm saying? If I get you booked at 15, you know what I'm saying? Well, I can get that little 250 on it or whatever. And, I, and if I do this amount of shows or whatever, this and that, you know, 250 just for plugging some up is, is a good amount to get started with. But yeah, that 250 right. could turn into twenty thousand dollars you know what i'm saying for every situation you hook up but to start out you know what i'm saying okay now you look at it if i book get them booked on five shows see i just made 1250 for free all i did was made phone calls then you start building it up even more or you say hey okay he won't you want 1500 i'm gonna just tell him two racks and see i need to get me five that one ain't tapping into your money. Right. Or I'm gonna tell them 1750 or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or you can negotiate with the artist and say, hey, do it, you want 1500 Do it for 125 for me. But then you still charge 1750 and you get two five. And that's what the DJ's gotta get involved with. You know, the DJ's huh? gotta DJ's gotta get involved with doing stuff like that, you know. Thanks. Because a lot of times, just like they want the artist to pay them, but or they want to just jump in when you already moving around and be like, man, let me be your role, DJ. Let me be this. Let me know, bro. You trying to just make some money off me and embark on what I done built. Let's create a path where you can make some money off your context. Make somebody else believe in what, what it is. That's right. Because I can guarantee you I can call the same promoter or the same DJ somewhere or wherever. Or it's it. Hey, Y'all may not want to pay them up front, man. Let's just put something together and see how it work out there. Let's, we'll do a 70-30 split or a 60-40 dough split. Well, then we get out the dough, let's just see. Let's just try you know it what out. Yeah, let's try it out. And go there, you might make $20,000 at the dough. You know what I'm saying? And all you was going to charge them with $1,500, but shit, you ain't know that he was that hot in that city or the way y'all promoted it, it actually worked. And I've seen so, it happen like know, that, too. I've seen it happen like that. Right. So it, it, it's so many angles and avenues you can use to do this. Or just put on the show in your own area. Hey, man, do me this, man. The club only going to give me the dope at 50-50. You know what I'm saying? He going to do a 50% split so I can get the club. Look, man. Me and you would split the 50 50 down the middle, or she let me pay the security and the, or whatever, and then we split the rest or whatever the split. You know what I'm saying? Like, work some out to where you can where you can eat off it too, because you can actually make that artist bigger in your market and create a situation where, you know what I'm saying, other artists want to be a part of the movement or whatever. That's so, right. Just create a, a lane where you can make some money together, and then that makes the artist like, you know what, bro, we're not this way to, yeah, man, we need to get together on something. Especially if it's an artist already moving, such as myself, you know what I'm saying? Right. Just making big things happen that the average artist may or may not be doing. Like, you know, I'm on platforms like BET Jams, MTBU, Revolt TV, um, Shade four five, like you're not just gonna get there <laughs> on a lot of these platforms independent. You gotta know something. Yeah. You gotta be connected with somebody. That's that so, comes, that's where that networking comes in at. Thanks. Thanks. So those accolades is easy to sell, you know what I'm saying, some tickets in a different market. Yeah. So like I said. You ain't even got it. You can do one in your market just to, you know what I'm saying, show the people that you already got in mind. You might say, well, I got a partner or a cousin in Kentucky or a friend or somebody that knows in Kentucky that got a spot. I know somebody over here in uh, Texas and somebody down the, right in Florida. You know what? Before I even go at them, let me do one myself. Get a couple of the hottest artists in the city that's on the rise, let them open, bring some people out, you know what I'm saying, promote the hell out of it, blow the shit out the water, 
bigger than life. Bring the show, boom. Feel me? Then you use that as your selling point. Look what we did right here in my city. We pulled out 800 people. Boom. We can come out there, man. This dude popping. They going to Google, see, hey, he in movies, he in this, he in that. He got this going. You know what? Yeah, hey, yeah. Like, we can do it on the dough situation. Oh, we can do it. Y'all can just go and give him this amount. You know, he really charged this, but he's doing the promo run with me. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever. Make it happen. That's how it's supposed to be done right there. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's how it's I supposed be to be done. Like, I try to get with DJs and sit down and get them a path like, bro, I'm a business man. Let me help you help me. But That's right. A lot of them are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't never do it. Yeah, they you know want to do that. Yeah, you know, they, they want to just jump in and be like, man, just pay me for DJing for you. Like, nah, bro, it's a million other DJs want to do that. And I ain't finna just add nobody to my platform if they ain't putting in no work. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Just like they wanted me to work for it. They wanted me to get out here and grind and promote it. And I had to go city to city and make other people believe in it just so I can bring it back and come back and be like, hey, they they bang with me in New York. They bang with me in Atlanta. They bang with me in L.A. They over here. Yeah, we need it. You know what I'm saying? Now you want to jump on board. Now you want to be the DJ that go to Atlanta, New York, and LA, and all that. This is not how this works. Hey, that's not what you didn't want to do that before in the first place. So now, all of a sudden, why you want to do that now? Yeah. All the reason I was in that was Marcus because you wouldn't even play me here. Yeah. You know, so, hey, it ain't no hard feeling. I understand. But in these markets that you look up to, they look what they're doing. Look at how these people coming after me. Yeah. You know, you sure all right. So, Instead of me opening up my bag and giving you something, let's create a, a whole nother bag. Let's create a bag together. Yeah. Let's go eat together. I done already then, then built the foundation. All you got to do is just let's build on it. That's it. Yeah, don't wait till I build a whole house and be to my, where my room at? <laughs> In the backyard. In the shed. The <laughs> All yeah. right. Yeah. Man, let them know where they can find your music at. Man, you can find me on all platforms on the PBE Pluto. That's P as in Paul, B as in Boy, E as in Echo, Pluto like the planet. You know, just go type that in on Google, go on Pandora, whatever platform, SoundCloud, whatever you listen to music on, Amazon Music Title, whatever. Type in PBE Pluto and you can find what I got going on. What about like your social media and your Instagram and all that? Everything is PBE Pluto. You can go on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want to go on. Type in PBE Pluto. You're going to be able to find what I got going. Now, I'm more active on Instagram and Facebook. I ain't too tough into TikTok and Snapchat and all that, but I'm on them platforms. I don't really be on that. If you really want to get in contact or got any questions or want to find out what I got going on, my brand or how I'm moving, Go to Facebook and Instagram. Okay, okay. Man, I've really enjoyed this interview. It's been real enlightening and stuff. It's been real educational. You know, yes, this, I, I just had a good time, you know, chopping it up with you and shit. I appreciate it, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, I so. definitely appreciate you too for taking out your time and actually doing it, tapping into the brand and giving me some more outlook and some more promo from your angle. But, you know, that situation I was mentioning it is on the table. So, we can make something if we able to put it up and put it together if you want to do something. I already got a club in mind, bro. I already got a club in mind. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it later on. Big facts. All right, bro. Well, I appreciate it, man, and I'll holler at you later. It's official. All right.